Hello and welcome. This is Dmitry with Rula Technologies. Imagine you are testing a complex and very expensive structure like a satellite with a solar panel for vibration durability. You will most likely face one problem. The acceleration will be low at the attachment point, but so high at the end points the structure could easily break. Here's where notching control comes into play. This convenient tool in Rula software helps you set the upper and lower limits of acceleration, velocity or displacement on a particular channel. In this video, we'll configure the notching limits for the two main test types, sine and random, using a shaker, a ruler vibration controller RLC21 and a satellite model with three accelerometers. Before we begin, let's discuss the construction we'll use for testing. We have assembled a model satellite from a thin metal strip attached to a shaker and then put three accelerometers on both sides and in the center. The accelerometer in the center is connected to channel 1 on our vibration controller, while the sensors on either ends are connected to channel 2 and 3. Now let's set up a sign test. We'll walk you through the process, but if you already know the ropes, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps. First, press the Create Test button on the main ribbon tab. We have already created a test sequence for our satellite so we can open the pre-made test using the Test Settings button. If you're starting from scratch, you can follow along using a new test from the Create Test button. In the Profile tab, enter the required test parameters. Start and end frequency, amplitude, sweep rate, abort and tolerance levels. Make sure that the box Check for Shaker Limits is checked, otherwise the software will ignore the set limits which may lead to equipment damage. In the Schedule tab, choose Run Profile. In the Limits tab, choose the shaker connected to your ruler vibration controller and set the control limits. You can find the exact numbers in the shaker specification or on the manufacturer's website. In the Channels tab, set the measuring and control channels for the connected sensors, as well as the sensor type and parameters. Now we're ready to start our test. First, let's run the sign test without the notching limits just to illustrate our point. This is our graph without the notching limits. We can see from the sharp peaks that the acceleration on the sides of the object is way higher than on the shaker itself. This is what we call overtesting. And this process is very damaging to the structure. To avoid breaking our satellite, let's set the notching limits, in other words, a maximum acceleration limit for each control channel. First, press the Test Settings button on the main ribbon tab. Go to Limits and press the Notch Limits. Choose the necessary channel and set the limit. You can also use a limit table to set the exact frequency values for the channel. We can set up notch and limits for acceleration, velocity or displacement in meters per second squared, meters per second, g, meters, millimeters and centimeters. You can also add new measurement units in the software settings, but that is a topic for future videos. Let's set up the upper limits for channels 2 and 3 first and run the test again. The acceleration now drops after reaching the set level, which means our satellite is safe. This here is the limit option, but we can also choose to abort the test if the acceleration reaches a set level. The software will give us a notification and await user instructions. Now that we've set the upper limits and got rid of overtesting, let's look at the graph again. It has a lot of anti-resonance, which is another major problem we refer to as under-testing. To avoid it, we need to specify the lower notch limits. The procedure is the same, but we now need to choose the lower limit column in the Notch in Limits tab.
Back to the graph. The acceleration on all channels is now limited to the range from 2 to 0.71 g. And we managed to avoid both overtesting and undertesting. Be aware that the software has certain priorities when it comes to notching limits. In our case, if both overtesting and undertesting happen, it will avoid overtesting first to prevent equipment damage, which explains why the graph sometimes breaks the lower limits we've set. The same procedure of setting the notching limits applies to the random test. Here is a version of the test without limits and with notching limits applied. Thank you for watching, we hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe to Ruo channel so you don't miss new updates and visit our website at ruotag.com following the link in the description below to learn more about our products. Until next time.